myself and why I am talking about this tonight. Um, I went to school for nutrition, then I uh, went to culinary school, and I'm also a certified personal trainer. Um, I Nutrition and health and fitness have been a lifelong passion for me. And my goal is to share that with you in a way that's easy to understand and something that you can then apply to wherever you are in your life. So over the last 20 years, I've worked in restaurants, fitness facilities, nonprofits with government food programs. Um, and I noticed that people all wanted to eat healthy, but maybe they didn't know how or where to start. And so in 2017, I started my own business called Culinary Confidant, where I uh, work more one-on-one -on -one with people and kind of meet you where, where you're at. And I have offered one-on-one -on -one coaching, um, cooking parties and workshops in the community and including the ones that Beth mentioned, the, the knife skills. And we did Ask a Chef on Facebook. That was fun. And uh, now everything's virtual though, because of COVID. So yeah, we'll probably be doing more virtual stuff. I think the world is kind of, you know, adapting with Zoom and we're going that way. And it's kind of nice because you can, I mean, I'm sitting in a greenhouse <laughs> right now, but not really. Uh, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. And uh, thanks for listening, even though you haven't listened all the way yet, but thanks for signing up. So let's start with what does plant-based mean? Um, plant-based can mean either that you eat mostly plant-based or that you eat 100% plant-based and that it means different things to different people. So just know that when you're talking to somebody, they may say I eat plant-based, but they may not do it all of the time because um, people interpret it differently. So it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're a vegetarian or a vegan and that you never eat meat or dairy rather that you choose more of your foods from plant sources, um, such as the ones I've got listed here, fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, oils, whole grains, legumes, beans. Um, but then it gets a little confusing because what's the difference then between plant-based and vegan? And people will use those terms interchangeably, but really the, the difference is like people will typically say they follow a plant-based diet for health reasons. Whereas vegan diet, uh, a lot of the time it's more for like ethical reasons and, um, you know, like the, saving the animals and saving the planet. And, uh, but that doesn't mean if you say you follow a plant-based diet that you're not pro animals and pro the planet. So, um, but someone who's vegan will not only ensure that they're not consuming any animal products, including honey or certain wines, but they'll also not support products that are tested on animals or come from animals like cosmetics, lotions, leather shoes or bags or a couch. Um, so veganism is more of a lifestyle. And I personally identify as following a plant-based diet because while I do love animals, I have three of my own, one of which you saw if you were here earlier. Um, I mainly choose my diet based on how it makes me feel health-wise and because I want to live a long time. So, uh, then there's the other diets. There's vegetarian diets, lacto-ovo you may have heard of, lacto being milk, ovo being eggs. So a lacto-ovo vegetarian would still consume milk and um, eggs. Vegan, we talked about no animal products, so no meat. That means no beef, no pork, no fish. Um, a lot of times people are confused and say that like fish is not meat, but like fish is meat. <laughs> um, a pescatarian diet would be one that uh, you eat fish. So you include eggs, you include dairy, fish, seafood, but no meat or poultry. And a flexitarian is a term that um, it's like, like what it sounds like, flexible. So sometimes you eat meat once in a while, but you're somebody that doesn't eat it as often. Um, and then there's the SAD diet. <laughs> <laughs> that stands for the standard American diet, which I like to include because um, it's so a, a standard American diet is high in processed food like animal products or and animal products, uh, low in fiber rich foods like fresh vegetables, fruits, beans. And it's aptly named because sometimes it makes your body sad. <laughs> so um, I'm glad that you've all joined me tonight to learn more about how we can make our diets a little bit happier. <laughs> 
So, and when I say diet, I don't mean a diet to lose weight. Um, a lot of people will say I'm on a diet or I need to go on a diet. When I say diet, um, to me, that means the way that you eat all of the time is your diet. That's what you normally consume. So, so what does plant-based eating look like? Um, it can look like a lot of different things for different people. This is an example of some of the things that I eat. These are all things that I've made. Um, so many colors, so many things to choose from, soups, stews, stir fries, salads, roasted vegetables. And nowadays there's so many substitutions. There's all kinds of non-dairy milks, yogurts, egg replacers, there's meat substitutes. If you can think of it, com like companies are coming out with it nowadays, um, but you do wanna be careful to not rely too heavily on some of the overly processed foods because even though they say they're plant-based, it doesn't necessarily mean it's your healthiest option. Processed food is still processed food at the end of the day. So you wanna look for things that you can identify. So for example, you if you have a black bean burger where you can actually like see pieces of black beans in your burger compared to a veggie patty where the ingredient label has like 27 ingredients, the option where you can see the actual like whole food item in there is gonna be your healthier choice. Um, and people often ask me like, what is healthy? What is, is this healthy? Is that healthy? And it's like, well, healthy, I think is a relative term because it depends on what you're choosing between. If you have a choice between a candy bar and a granola bar, the granola bar is probably your healthiest choice. Um, I mean, depending on the granola bar, some of them are pretty much candy bars. But then if you have a granola bar or a piece of fruit, your fruit is gonna be your healthier option. So really it's um, healthy as like the choice that you're making and when you're comparing it to things. Um, and the more, the more beneficial things that a food has for you in it, the healthier it is for you. So I like to think of like, okay, well, what is this food doing for me? Anything? Okay, well then maybe it's healthy a little bit. If it's doing nothing for me, then I wouldn't say it's healthy. So let's see, why plant-based? I know some of you mentioned in the beginning, you're thinking about incorporating more plant-based stuff, um, but maybe you're like, why should I, why should I bother doing that? Um, I'm good the way I am now. So I'll start with telling you why I follow a plant-based diet. Um, I've studied nutrition for a long time and a couple of years ago, I read this book which if you know me, you know that I talk about this book all the time. Um, it's called How Not to Die. Let's see if it'll show up here. <laughs> if I hold it right in front of my face. So it's called How Not to Die and it's by Dr. Michael Greger. Um, I am a huge fan of his. Um, he basically goes through, there's two parts in this book and the beginning of the book is the top 15 killers in the United States. And so each chapter is how not to die from heart disease, how not to die from diabetes, how not to die from uh, all of the different, uh, the 15 different ones that he lists. And then the second part of the book, he lists the, the things that you can eat so that you don't die from those things. I mean, I actually came across this on Instagram because I follow lots of nutrition stuff. And uh, yeah, it was, it was a total game changer for me. So before I even finished reading the book, I completely changed my diet. I changed my family's diet. And uh, we have been plant-based ever since. I have never felt better. My blood work is better and it wasn't bad before. Um, I, it, yeah, I can't say enough good things. It's like over the last 20 years, I was learning all these little tidbits about nutrition and collecting like puzzle pieces. And then I read this book and it was like, I put the puzzle together and I was like, oh my gosh, it all makes sense. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's something that I tell everybody that will listen to me about because I'm such an advocate for plant-based diet now. And, um, I just want to share it with everyone because I feel so great and I want everyone else to feel great too. So, um, but, you know, in addition to not, um, you know, in, in addition to being healthier and eating more plant-based, it'll reduce the demand for animal products in factory farmed animals. The more plant-based stuff that we eat and that we buy and reduce, you know, the cruel and inhumane ways that animals are raised, um, 
I know we're all familiar with all that. I'm not going to go into detail, but if you want to learn more about that, I would recommend checking out a book uh, called Diet for New America. And that is, that was actually written like 30 years ago by John Robbins. Um, and I think it's interesting that, so he actually would have been the heir to the Baskin Robbins uh, ice cream like empire, but he decided, you know, I feel pulled to go in this direction and be an advocate for this vegan lifestyle. And um, yeah, he said, no, thanks. I'm good. I guess he had, they had like an ice cream cone shaped swimming pool and stuff. I don't know. Um, so it's, it's interesting. And I'll talk about him a little bit more later, but yeah, I would, I would re recommend checking that book out if you're interested in more of the animal aspect of things, but yeah, so we've talked about health. We've talked about animals. Let's talk about the planet. Cause I know a lot of us are PFC people and that matters. We care about that kind of thing. Um, the University of Oxford found that cutting meat and dairy from your diet can reduce your carbon footprint by up to 73%. That's more than changing out your light bulbs. That's more than turning down your water heater. That's more than driving an electric car. Um, if you think about the processing involved in raising livestock for consumption, we are using a lot of resources, water, land, fuel, the energy for the machinery and the facilities. And there's a question of what do we do with all the waste that's produced by the animals? If you compare beef to soybeans, producing beef requires nearly 1800 gallons of water per pound of meat compared to 216 gallons of water per pound of soybean. That's a big difference. If we grew crops to eat instead of for animal feed, we would reduce all of that and could actually feed more people. It's kind of amazing if you think about it. Um, and last but definitely not least, I have to mention public health and safety. We're in the middle of a pandemic, <laughs> COVID-19. Um, and this isn't the first time something like this has happened. You've likely heard of the bird flu, the swine flu, mad cow disease. These all came from animals and were started because of the conditions that exist within factory farming. Animals are kept in such close proximity to each other that they're allowing these viruses to spread more rapidly and also mutate so much more quickly than they would under natural circumstances where animals are like spread out and grazing in a field, um, you know, this kind of thing wouldn't be happening. So, you know, every time that you're choosing something plant-based, not only are you choosing something that's healthier for you, but you're reducing the demand for animal products, which is great for the animals, obviously, the planet, and for our future as a human species. <laughs> so many reasons, you know? <laughs> um, so how do we make changes? You know, that's, it's hard. We want to be better. We all want to be better. Maybe you start by, you know, adding more veggies to your meals that you're already eating. Maybe you swap out beans where you would normally have meat. Even the smallest step that you take is a step in the right direction. There was a study done on beans where one group added a cup of beans to their diet per day. That's it. They didn't change anything else. Um, and then the other group did nothing. Uh, the group that added the beans lost weight. All they did was add beans. They were even consuming more calories. Um, beans, they've got fiber, they've got nutrients. Um, you know, it's an easy, an easy thing that you can do is just add some more beans, some more vegetables. Um, you know, and if you're feeling up for it, challenge yourself to try maybe a meal a week, a meal a day even, um, to do plant-based. I'm sure you've heard of meatless Mondays. There's also people who do meatless during the day until dinner time, and that works for them. I know somebody in the beginning mentioned that they are, do vegan diet two days a week. That's another way to do it. Um, you know, do what feels appropriate for your situation and challenge yourself to make the changes that you want to see in your life. Um, because I like this quote we have from Dr. Gregor. I love Dr. Gregor. Um, you remember that it's not what you eat today that matters or tomorrow or next week, but rather what you eat over the next months, years, and decades. So you have to find lifestyle changes that fit into your lifestyle. And that kind of goes with what I said before, that you shouldn't be on a diet. You should just have a diet that you consume on a regular basis and love it. It's your diet should make you feel good and you should enjoy it. Um, you know, it should never feel like I'm on a diet and it's a punishment. 
If you have a sweet tooth, try frozen fruit, frozen mango, frozen blueberries. Take a super ripe banana, cut it up into chunks and throw it in the freezer and then put it in the food processor once it's frozen and you've got some banana ice cream. You could put some protein on it and then you've got a snack that's got, or protein, some, I'm like talking faster than I'm thinking. <laughs> put some peanut butter on it and then you've got protein in your snack. <laughs> you know where I'm going with this, right? Uh, so yeah, there's, you know, start with small steps and then take more steps and you'll get to where you want to go eventually. <laughs> I'm glad you're getting excited. <laughs> Sometimes I'm too excited about stuff. <laughs> so if you want to, you got to have a plan if you want to make changes. And one of the easiest things that you can do when you go grocery shopping, know what you're getting before you go. Otherwise, we all know what happens, right? You get to the grocery store and you're like, I'm so hungry. I'm going to buy this and I'm going to buy this and I'm going to buy all this stuff. And you're like, yes, I made all these awesome purchases. And then you get home and you're like, what should I make for dinner? I didn't buy anything for dinner, you know? So, Make a plan, whether you look up recipes, write down your ingredients, make a list at the very least so that when you go to the store, you can stick to your list and then you'll know what you're getting. And then when you're hungry, you'll be like, oh, I'm hungry. I bought this for this specific situation. Now I'll have this snack that I planned out. Um, and if you get into the habit of doing that, it gets easier. It really does. I was always very anti making a plan. I just like, I don't need to do that. I I'm a pro at this. Even I do that. And it's so helpful. And then when I don't have my plan, I'm like, I'm lost. What do I do? <laughs> so, um, yeah, make your plan, bring your list to the store. And when you get to the store, stick to the outside of the store. Um, because often that's where you're going to find your fresh stuff, your fruits, your veggies, the bakery, the dairy, or the dairy substitutes. Um, like soy milk and coconut yogurt. Those are some favorites in our house. Um, although I don't know yet what the layout will be of PFC, where the produce will be yet. That's a general guideline for most grocery stores. So, and then when you're shopping, you'll typically find the shelf stable items in the center of the grocery store. This is all the processed stuff, but it's also the canned items. So like the beans and the canned tomatoes, the stuff that you do want to buy. Um, so when you're buying something that is maybe in a box or it has a long list of ingredients, look for labels that have fewer ingredients. Um, the fewer the ingredients, the better. And also, do you know what they are? Can you understand what the label says? Um, if you don't know what it is, are you sure you want to eat it? Um, an easy way too to tell if an item has uh, an animal product in it, a lot of the times at the bottom of the list of ingredients in bold, it'll tell you whether or not it's got uh, dairy, egg, shellfish, fish, because it, it's labels are required to list common allergens. And there's eight common allergens and dairy and eggs are two of those. Um, there's also soy and wheat, uh, what else? peanuts, tree nuts. And so those will all be on the bottom. You don't have to necessarily scan that whole list and read all of them. And also fun fact, if you didn't know, ingredients are listed by weight. So the first item that's listed on the ingredient label is what there is the most of in that. So if you pick up a box and the first label is on the, on the label, the first ingredient is sugar. It is mostly sugar by weight and it goes down from there. I always thought that was an interesting fact. I learned that a long time ago. Um, so then also when you're shopping, make sure you're shopping for a variety of types of items. And I mean, in regards to the shelf life. So you wanna buy fresh, as much fresh as you can consume before it's gonna go bad. However, you also wanna get some canned items. Great canned items would be like canned tomatoes, coconut milk, my kids like corn, um, and then also frozen items. I like to stock up on blueberries, broccoli, edamame is a good one. You know, and then like your fresh would be salad stuff for sure. Like I'm not gonna buy canned or frozen salad. <laughs> Although spinach you could probably um, use for certain recipes, but 
this will ensure that you've got a variety of foods that are going to last you a long time and so that you don't have to go to the store every couple of days. Although, if you just want to come and hang out at PFC, that's cool too. <laughs> you can frequent the bulk bins and, you know, stock up on your granola, your trail mix, whatever items they'll be carrying. I can't guarantee <laughs> specifics, but um, so at the bottom of this slide, you'll see a link to a pantry checklist. And that is uh, a great tool if you're looking to stock your pantry with lots of plant-based staples. Although the checklist does say vegan at the top, it translates well for a plant-based diet too. Everyone will receive a copy of this presentation uh, after tonight's Zoom call, because there's also some links in the, on the next slides and stuff that I'm sending you home with, and hopefully you check out. Uh, foods to include. So this is like, I mentioned Dr. Greger's book, How Not to Die. The second half of the book, he really focuses on like what foods you should include. And the nice thing about the book is he goes into detail. Like, this is why you should eat broccoli. This is what it's going to do for you. This is how amazing it is. And these are the studies that prove it. That's the biggest thing I love in this book is it's like, Here's proof, proof. I'm not just telling you, I think you should do this because I lost five pounds, one of those types of diets. Um, so yeah, the foods that you should eat on a regular basis, beans, berries, other fruits, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli and cauliflower, leafy greens and other vegetables, whole grains, flax seeds. You wanna definitely make sure you grind your flax seeds before you eat them. Otherwise they're gonna go in and they're gonna go right back out and you're not gonna get any of the benefits. So you got to grind those. You can buy them ground or you can grind them yourself. Um, nuts, spices, especially turmeric, super good for you. Um, and beverages like water, coffee, and tea, more than that too, uh, especially water. But so there's also a link on this page for the Daily Dozen Checklist. That is uh, a video, I believe it's like eight minutes or so, where it goes into detail about each of these items and why they're so wonderful, why you should include them in your diet. Um, and actually Dr. Greger developed the Daily Dozen Checklist initially as a tool for himself when he wanted to just ensure that he was getting all of the foods that he was reading all these studies about, that are so amazing. So he made a checklist and he put it on the fridge and he would just go put check marks on it. Well, now he's developed it and it's an app that you can have on your phone and you can make sure that you're getting the X amount of servings of each thing every day. Um, and if you're, you know, type A and detail oriented like myself, you'll notice I only have 11 things listed here, <laughs> but it's a dozen, right? So what's number 12? Exercise, but it's not a food. So it's not on my list. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do we have to talk about oh my goodness if you eat a plant-based diet you've probably gotten this question from people where will you get your protein like the world's gonna end so less than three percent of americans are actually protein deficient that's like not very many <laughs> and the people that are protein deficient are most likely on a calorie restricted diet. So they're not eating enough in general. Most people, 97% of Americans are fiber deficient. So the next time someone asks you where you're getting your protein from, you might ask them where they're getting their fiber from. Because fiber is not in animal pro uh, products. It's in, you know, plants. Fruits, veggies, fibers associated with a decreased risk of diabetes, metabolic syndrome, cardiovascular disease, obesity, various cancers, as well as risk factors for these conditions, including high cholesterol, blood pressure, and blood glucose. Fiber is only found in plants. So if you think about the standard American diet that we talked about earlier, it's low in fresh fruits and vegetables. This would explain why most Americans are not getting enough fiber. Um, and even if you don't follow a hundred percent plant-based diet, add some more plants because they're good for you. And you think about what is this food doing for me? Then yes, you need to have, you know, fruits and veggies. Um, on average, vegetarians and vegans get 70% more protein or get 70% more protein than they need each day. That's plenty. Um, if you take a look at the comparison with the beef and the black beans, you'll see that compared to beef, the same amount of protein 
from beans gives you 22 grams of fiber, more iron, more calcium, more magnesium, and no saturated fat or cholesterol. Plus it's cheaper and it uses less water to produce. And now I realize that the weights of the two are not equal, but lucky for us, we eat more than once a day and we don't need to meet all our protein needs in one sitting. So that shouldn't be a problem. Um, you know, the average person needs like 40 grams of protein a day. It depends on your, whether you're a man or you're a woman, how much you weigh and all that, but yeah. So plenty of ways to get protein if you're not consuming animal products. All different types of beans, kidney beans, chickpeas, pinto beans, black beans, lots of nuts, including nut butters, seeds, whole grains, different soy products, including edamame, tofu, grains, TVP. Um, TVP, if you're not familiar with it, is like this crumbly stuff. It's dried. It stands for textured vegetable protein. That's something I like to actually put in chili. Um, it tastes like nothing, but it absorbs all the flavors. So it's really good for stuff that's got a lot of spices and flavors. Um, tofu, my kids love tofu in the air fryer. I just got a fancy new air fryer, jumped on that bandwagon. So, um, so for example, like how would I meet my protein requirements in a day? Let's say I had some oatmeal with fruit for breakfast. There's six grams of protein right there. My snack might be an apple with some peanut butter or nut butter, seven grams. Lunch, I have a veggie sandwich or maybe a wrap, three grams protein per slice of whole wheat bread with some hummus maybe. Then dinner, I have bean burrito or lentil chili, maybe a stir fry with tofu. By now I'm at like 40 to 45 grams of protein and that doesn't even count any snacking that I've done for the day because I definitely snack. Maybe I had some trail mix, a granola bar. And who knows if I ate the recommended serving size. Maybe I had a second scoop of chili. Maybe I ate more, or maybe I had cornbread with my chili. People are getting plenty of protein. So don't be concerned. <laughs> so here are some of my favorite recipes that I've developed. I've included the links to them. Uh, they're on my website. Fire roasted poblano mac and cheese is a favorite in our house, um, especially with the kids. You can roast the peppers either right over the flame on top of the stove. My husband likes to put them under the broiler all at once uh, when he makes this recipe. And instead of cheese, they use a tofu and you put it in the blender um, and it comes out great. I, I love it. That was, I love macaroni and cheese. And so for me, this was a must. I had to create a recipe that I liked because all the recipes I tried out there, I was like, no, <laughs> you're not getting it. So uh, another recipe, orange glaze pineapple tofu stir fry. This is a great recipe if you wanna learn how to make a glaze, like when you order takeout, um, like Chinese food and it's got this shiny glaze on it. So that has uh, that technique you can learn. And the nice thing about stir fries is you can swap out whatever veggies you've got on hand. You've got something you need to use before it's gonna go bad, make a stir fry. Um, and it's also, uh, you know, it's healthy, good way to get lots of veggies. Broccoli is a great addition to stir fry because it absorbs all of the sauces. Um, and then we've got coconut ginger beet soup. So this is a great one if you have a garden and you get a lot of beets, or maybe you have a CSA and they keep sending you beets and you're like, what do I do with all these beets <laughs> that happened to me last summer? Um, this is one of my favorite beet recipes. So I hope you enjoy those. If you try them, I'd love to know. Um, I do have some more recipes on my website. Not as many as I would like, because I keep you know, seeming to be busy somehow, <laughs> but I also share stuff on Facebook. I share stuff on Instagram, uh, recipes, cooking tips, foodie related things. So you can follow me there if you're interested in that kind of stuff. If you click on my website, which is in later, it's also here, but, uh, and you just scroll to the bottom, I've got the links to social media stuff on there because I forgot to put it in this PowerPoint. So <laughs> So oh, some of my favorite resources. If you're wanting to eat more plant-based and you don't know where to start, well, first of all, I hope that, you know, some of what I've said tonight has been helpful. Um, but in addition, I wanna send you guys away with 
some resources. So first, we have Dr. Greger, my favorite, which I can't talk enough. I can't say enough positive things about him. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting him right before COVID hit last year at a fundraiser. Super nice guy, very friendly. And I love how he not only talks to people on a level that everyone can understand, but he sprinkles some humor in there too, like in his book and in his videos. He's kind of a funny guy, um, which when you're talking about death and disease, like it helps. <laughs> so uh, he wrote How Not to Die. He wrote How Not to Diet. And then there's uh, cookbooks that actually go along with those. And then most recently, he actually wrote a book called How to Survive a Pandemic During COVID, um, which is very fitting because actually his background is in infectious diseases. So he kind of pulled from that background and did that. Um, and then, yeah, so his website is nutritionfacts.org. There's tons of videos and there's short videos, you know, with a couple minutes and he's got all kinds of topics. What you want to learn about soy, rheumatoid arthritis. I think I saw something about cell phone radiation. Like there's uh, so many topics. Um, and then how it relates to food and what you can eat, things like that. So I love it because it's all evidence-based, meaning that he's citing scientific studies that prove what he's saying is true. He's not just saying, because I said so, and I'm a doctor, which you get from people sometimes. Um, he's also got a newsletter that you can sign up, and then these videos will show up in your inbox, which is kind of nice. I think it's once a week. Um, and then also he's on Facebook and he's on Instagram too. And he does, um, every once in a while, I think on Facebook and YouTube, he'll host like a Q and A session where you can join and you can type your questions in and he answers your questions like real time. And it's really cool. I've had him actually answer some of my questions. Um, so uh, next person on my list is Chris Carr. She is I, I love her so much. Um, I've actually been following her for almost 10 years now. And she's the one who developed the pantry checklist that I referenced earlier in the beginning. She's written a few books called Crazy Sexy Cancer Thriver, Crazy Sexy Diet, which is actually the book that I happened to pick up one day at the bookstore because I was like, what is this? <laughs> and it got me hooked on her stuff. Um, she also has Crazy Sexy Kitchen, which is recipes. Um, as well as a few others. So her story is she was diagnosed with a rare stage four cancer in 2003. All the doctors she went to were like, mm, there's no cure. You're probably going to die. You should prepare yourself. And she was like, I don't like that answer. So she took it upon herself to, you know, do as much research as she could as possible. Um, and she liked to say that Whole Foods was her pharmacy. She's been on Oprah. She had a movie about her story, but she actually shrunk she had lots of tumors. Um, she shrunk them. She refers to herself as a cancer thriver because while she didn't cure it, um, she's living with it and she's thriving and she's doing well. She's a big wellness activist and very motivational. Um, on her website, you can find recipes, product recommendations like anti-cruelty and clean products uh, like sunscreen, makeup, that kind of stuff info on our books and then different tools and like the pantry checklist that I uh, shared with you guys. And then also she's got stuff on like meditation, well-being, so very holistic. Um, and I recommend checking out her stuff too. She's got a newsletter, Facebook, Instagram, all that. So she's another person I definitely enjoy following her stuff. Um, Forks Over Knives is probably something that some of you have seen popping up on your social media. Um, They've got a lot of recipes. I actually just bought a magazine from Whole Foods recently that I, I saw a few times and I was like, yeah, it's $15, I don't know. And then ended up buying it. It has like a hundred recipes in it and I've made so many of them and it's they're so good. So just do it, spend the $15 or whatever it is. I'm sure you can find the recipes online as well. They've got their website um, where they've got recipes, they offer meal plans. And apparently they have cooking courses now too. Um, I haven't done the cooking course and I haven't done the meal plans, but they look like great uh, resources if you're wanting to get started and want a little more guidance. Um, and then if you like to watch movies, I would highly recommend Game Changers. It's really fun to watch. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and G uh, James Cameron, talking too fast, <laughs> and James Cameron are, 
uh, involved in that one. And it was on Netflix when I saw it. I think it's still available on Netflix. And um, they talk about the performance aspect of a plant-based diet and everyone from the world's strongest man, other like a cyclist, all kinds of athletes, and even firefighters are um, in the documentary. And one of my favorite quotes from the documentary is when the world's strongest man says, one person asked me, how can you get as strong as an ox without eating meat? And my, his answer was, have you ever seen an ox eating meat? <laughs> And I just love that response. Um, it's it's got so much good information in that movie. It's and it's entertaining. It's not like one of these documentaries where you're like, now I'm really sad. <laughs> um, it's uplifting. But yeah, so that's a fun one to watch. Uh, Forks Over Knives also has a movie. I've heard good things about it. I haven't yet watched it. It's on my list. Um, See Spiracy. That's one that people are talking about. I know on Facebook, I see that all over the place. I just watched that. I definitely recommend watching that one. Um, it's really informational about what's going on in the oceans right now. It talks about factory farm fishing and sustainable fishing and how it's not really a thing. Um, and that the fishing industry is kind of covering up all this stuff and that there's like so much plastic in the ocean. 45% of that plastic is fishing nets. Like I had never heard that before. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's interesting because the guy who makes, I forget his name, but the guy who makes the documentary, he shows how dangerous it is for him to actually be in these locations and filming this stuff. And uh, yeah, you get a really good sense for the danger. <laughs> so, then there's also my website, which we referenced earlier. Um, I've got some recipes on there, as well as different workshops that I offer, although everything's been moved to virtual because of COVID. But I, I do encourage you to reach out to me. I love to hear from people and answer any culinary, nutrition, or food-related questions. And I want you to consider me your phone a friend. You know, if you're wanting to substitute an ingredient or modify a recipe, or maybe you don't have a tool that you need, in the kitchen and you want to know if something can be done another way shoot me an email contact me on facebook i'm always available to talk about food um it's fun for me <laughs> kind of a food nerd so and lastly the food revolution summit i am super excited about this one um this is held by john robbins and his son ocean which is cool that his name is ocean um, John Robbins is the Baskin Robbins guy who wrote the book, uh, Diet for New America, but they bring together this group of speakers and it's, it's all virtual. I did the summit last year and I listened to almost all the speakers. Uh, most of them are doctors, including Dr. Gregor, who will be speaking this year, um, on the food COVID connection. <laughs> and I'm excited about that one. Um, but there's also food and nutrition experts as well. They'll be covering topics like chronic illness, cancer, the heart, the brain, hormones, autoimmune stuff, mental health, empathy for the animals and the planet and more. Um, there's 25-ish speakers. There's um, like three speakers a day. They each talk for an hour. And the nice thing is it's one, it's completely free. So you sign up. And then they'll send you the schedule and you can see who's talking, when they're talking, what they're talking about. And you can pick and choose like, oh, I'm interested in this person and I want to set aside an hour of my day to listen to this. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Um, if you happen to miss their talk, it's free for the rest of the day. So you can access it at any point the day that they talk. But then um, the next day they get erased and the, ne the next day's speakers will take over. Um, you can listen to those speakers that day for each day. So it's uh, for about a week and April, end of April. And at the end, you can actually buy all of the um, discussions or whatever that they have, but you don't have to, and there's no purchase required. Um, and it's, I, I learned a lot last year actually. Um, and it's just super interesting. So I definitely recommend checking that out. Um, if you're not familiar with that, or even if you are, do it again. So there's so many more resources out there, but 
these are my favorite and I wanted to share them with you. Um, and hopefully this is helpful getting you started. I hope that, um, you know, something that I've said inspires you a little bit. And if you have questions, reach out to me and let me know like, hey, this is how I'm doing. Um, Cause I love to hear from people and uh, yeah, I, I think that, you know, that's, that's it. I mean, it's not it. There's so much more, but I don't want to keep talking all night. So um, I just want to thank everybody for taking the time out of your busy lives to join me tonight. It's exciting to see so many people in our community that are interested in learning about plant-based diets. Um, and I think we have some time left, hopefully, to answer some questions. So if anyone has any questions, I would, uh, I'll do my best to answer them. <laughs> Thank you so much, Crystal. That was great. Very informative. Um, so please, yep, if you have any questions, please type it over into the chat box. Um, I, I'll start. Um, I know I'm not the only person uh, that maybe has this issue, <laughs> but um, looking to move from pr more protein, you know, you were talking about beans and, and lentils and things being really good protein sources um, instead of to replace the meat. Um, but what would you recommend to introduce that when you may have an upset stomach from that kind of stuff when you initially start eating? Yes, yes. So, um, so if you, it could be two things. One, maybe you're just not used to eating beans or foods that have more fiber or because um, there's soluble fiber and there's insoluble fiber and all that. And, you're, and your gut kind of has to get used to this stuff. So I would definitely recommend if you find that you're getting an upset stomach when you're adding things in, add them in slowly um, and see how you do with that. You know, if you had like a cup of some, like a bean chili and it was a lot and you were like, no, I'm not going to do that again. Um, you know, add less next time until you get to the amount that doesn't bother you and then slowly and, you know, gradually increase the amount of that. Um, also try different kinds because there's a lot of different kinds out there. Some may be more easily digested by your, you know, your gut than others. Like lentils are, you know, they're going to like fall apart a little bit easier than um, something like chickpeas or pinto beans probably. But yeah, so I would, I would just mix it up, but don't give up. <laughs> uh, we have a question here. I know that you're not specifically talking about meat substitutes, but are there any meat substitutes you think are really good or that your family really likes? That's a good question. Um, you know, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so meat substitutes, I'm, I'm just going to guess that we're talking about like um, Beyond Burgers and that type of stuff. Um, we, my, so my kids love Beyond Burgers. Um, and we do those once in a while. Um, because they taste good. I definitely notice a difference in how my stomach reacts compared to if I make a, uh, like a black bean burger. Um, I can tell that it's easier for my stomach to digest the one that I make. Uh, so, and as far as other stuff, let me think. Hot dogs are hard because hot dogs, there's one brand, Tofurky is pretty good um, in substituting stuff. And then um, there's, I'm trying to think of other brands for meat substitutes, dairy and cheese and stuff. But yeah, I mean, you know, you just kind of have to experiment. Everyone kind of likes different flavors. So go with what you like and some of them aren't great. So then don't eat those, try a different one and you might be better off making your own. So yeah, I've heard Beyond Browers taste like the real thing. I don't know that I've tried that one though. But, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that answers that question. I hope it does. Yeah, I think it does. Uh, next question is how about the cost of switching over? Is there much of a difference? I think switching from meat to all plants. I think that well, you're going to save money if you're not buying meat because meat is expensive, especially if you're buying good quality meat um, and you switch over to buying beans or actually plant-based um, items or whole food items, because those are all going to be a lot cheaper than um, 
than your meats. But if you're looking at the cost of like a Beyond Burger compared to a regular burger, there's not going to be a lot of difference there. But I wouldn't encourage you completely, you know, to go with like the Beyond Burgers and the, the meat substitutes. Because again, if you look at that, you look at it and you're like, what is that? I don't actually know what's in there. I don't see any beans. I don't see any like <laughs> whole food items in there. So it's still processed. Um, so moderation with that, definitely. Um, and then, but if you don't buy a lot of fresh produce, you might end up spending more on that than you're used to. So it might even out. But for me, I think we save money because we've always bought um, a lot of fresh stuff, so. Uh, next question. Uh, what about products like Beano for probably in reference to the, my first question when your stomach gets upset? Do you have any uh, thoughts on that? So I used to take Beano <laughs> before I was on a plant-based diet because the things that I was eating were upsetting my stomach. And it didn't really help much, um, in my opinion. Um, I want to say I was watching Mythbusters or something like that, where milk and magnesium is what they recommended for gas. <laughs> and Mylanta, that's what I would say. That's, that's the only thing that I know I take and my stomach feels better. Because, But I will say, maybe this is too much information, since pl going plant-based, the gas in our house has gone down way a lot. <laughs> Another benefit. <laughs> Even though we eat more beans. Yeah. Uh, does organic versus non-organic truly matter or is it pretty much just eat your veggies? So yes and no. Um, if you can buy organic, great. But if it's going to prevent you from buying vegetables, then don't. Just buy what you can afford. Um, there are certain items, like I notice the difference. If you, if you buy like organic and not organic, taste them next to each other and see what you think. Because a lot of times the organic is going to taste better. Like blueberries for me, if we don't buy the organic ones, I can taste it. And, um, cause there's a lot of stuff on there and I have a hard time believing that you're able to wash it all off, you know? Um, and also organic bananas. I definitely recommend buying organic bananas. Um, they taste better. I know there's regular conventional bananas are sprayed with all kinds of stuff. Um, so I would say when you can, yes, buy organic, but um, you know, you don't have to, you're better off eating the vegetables than not eating the vegetables, even if they're not organic. Uh, do you like recipes with lots of beans and some turkey or chicken? Any downside? Well, again, it goes back to what's healthy. So like if you were going to be eating a big fat steak or this recipe that's got beans and some meat, you know, which one is the healthier option here? Or say you've got this recipe that's got some beans and some turkey or whatever the meat is you're putting in it, or you've got this completely, um, you know, 13 bean soup with lots of um, hearty veggies in it, and it's got no meat, you know, so it just, it's relative. If that's your stepping stone and that's your improvement, then that's great. Um, but, you know, so don't think that you, you know, don't walk away from this and think I have to be perfect. I have to throw away all the meat in my house and you have to do what's going to work for you. Um, and I encourage you to think about how you can improve what it is that you're already doing in a way that's comfortable for you. Personally, I don't make recipes with meat in them at all. Uh, doesn't it depend on your definition of whole food plant-based diet as to what you include in your diet? Uh, well, it depends if you, if you are someone that follows a whole food plant-based diet, then you wouldn't eat a Beyond Burger. If that's the question, I'm not really sure what the question is, but, um, yeah, so a whole food plant-based diet doesn't include any processed food. It doesn't include oils. It doesn't include, sh um, sugars. Um, it's a lot more strict. I, I, I in a perfect world, I would do that, but I don't. <laughs> But um, yeah. Okay, 
I think we got through all the questions. If anyone does want to have any, any extra questions, you can feel free to throw them up there. But again, I want to thank Crystal. Uh, thank you so much for walking through this with us as well as answering all our questions. Um, I want to thank everyone here again for attending to um, uh, Prairie Food Co-op. We are putting on uh, kind of a, a set of wellness uh, workshops coming up. We, we did a yoga session last month. This is the Eat Well, Be Well session for this month. And then next month, we actually have um, a uh, recharging with nature session, actually with myself and uh, Katie Larson. We'll be talking about uh, basically how to de-stress and really um, using nature to help you do that, which uh, which is really nice because the weather is finally cooperating and it's actually springtime. So uh, we'll be sending out an email with all of the slides that Crystal uh, walked through, including the links of all the resources that she provided to. Um, and we'll also send you a link uh, for our speaking for the next session as well, if you'd like to join us. So I uh, hope everyone has a good night. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time. Yes, thank you so much for um joining tonight and it was it was great i loved having all these people interested in everything so if you have any other questions feel free to contact me um, my info is on the website i'm also on facebook instagram and you'll see me around pfc too and actually i, I can include your email in um in your email address in oh the email. yeah my email is super easy it's crystal at culinary confidant.com perfect so. so have a good night everyone thank you